Last time on Building Resilience, we were installing a mini split heat pump from Mitsubishi, poking hoses through the walls, connecting them, and setting the outdoor unit, the compressor, in place. Mini splits are a great option, even for cold climates. Heat pump adoption up here in the north has not been the smoothest of, of roads. In fact, 20 years ago, we weren't allowed to use them as a primary heat source. And frankly, the technology just wasn't there yet. But a lot has changed since then, and now they're an option worth considering, especially with things like hyperheat from Mitsubishi, which can comfortably perform down to minus 20 degrees. And when it's not freezing cold out, boasts a pretty impressive efficiency of 4.68 COP, which is like saying 468% efficient. And when it does get down to zero or minus five or minus 20, that might drop down to say 1.6, one, which is like saying 100%, or even maybe as low as 70%, but you compare that against a traditional furnace or boiler that's running 96, 97% efficiency at its peak performance, and that's still a pretty good deal. With the cover screwed on and the mini split fired up, we're going up on the roof to put down some peel and stick underlayment from Benjamin Obdike. They call it Vapor Dry SA because it's vapor permeable. That means it stops liquid water from going through, but moisture molecules, vapor can escape, allowing the structure to dry out. We're all familiar with ice and water shield. That's that peel and stick stuff you put around the eaves. Typically from there, we switch over to a synthetic or some other kind of underlayment for the rest of the roof that's stapled down. Now, Benjamin Obdike has a product called Vapor Dry. And Vapor Dry is a self-acured membrane. It's got a solid acrylic backing. Uh, and when you lay that down over the roof deck, you have continuous air sealing across the entire surface. However, one of the big advantages is, unlike an ice and water shield, which is vapor impermeable, this product is fully vapor permeable. This means that any moisture, any water that manages to get from the inside of the house up into the rafters or the truss area has the ability to get through this membrane and out into the world and away from all your wood products. Another advantage of Obdike's vapor dry roofing underlayment is the ability to walk on the surface with confidence. Unlike a mechanically fastened system that's using a cap fastener or staple to hold it down to the roof deck, because it's continually adhered, it's insanely grippy and there's no sag, there's no movement in it as you walk across that surface. So we've got a product that is vapor permeable, it's easy to walk on, it's giving us a good air seal across the entire roof deck. This is all pretty awesome, but one of the things that our crews really love about Obdike and their approach to the whole enclosure system is that they have both a wall self-adhered product like their HydroGap SA, and now the Vapor Dry SA product for the roof deck. So I can get air sealing up the wall, across the eaves, around the fascias, whatever I want. The entire structure, I can get my air sealing, my air control layer on the outside, and I'm not relying on the OSB or plywood to be that air control layer. The first step in the installation process is snapping a line to position the top of the first row. Enough sections of vapor dry are then cut to length. David's using a handy little jig, which is basically a two x four screwed into the underside of the rafters. This ensures the piece will be long enough to fold over the subfascia on both ends. Sealing those edges is extra protection from air and water leaks. The strip is positioned onto the line and the top release sheet is peeled off. After the top of the membrane is stuck in place, they pull off the bottom release sheet and fold the vapor dry over the fascia. The next row goes on remarkably similar to the previous one with the added detail of overlapping the seams. Horizontal seams overlap at least four inches and vertical ones overlap at least six inches. But don't worry about memorizing that because it's printed on the membrane. The top course is overlapped at the bottom and folded over the fascia at the top. The continuous acrylic backing adhesive allows the sheet to be repositioned easily. Eliminating wrinkles is important because a continuous and flat connection between the membrane and the roof sheathing creates a superior air barrier to one with wrinkles. At the roof to wall intersections, the vapor dry can be run up the wall to protect that vulnerable spot from water leakage and to maintain a continuous air barrier. At the bottom corner where the membrane folds over the fascia, 
Joseph folds the side flap into the corner and then folds the top flap over that because it's smart overlapping technique. When the membrane is positioned where you want it, use some sort of tool to apply pressure and activate the adhesive into the substrate. This is often done by rolling it. Not usually like that though. Like this. Now that the peel and stick membrane is peeled and stuck, we roll out another Benjamin Obdike product, Cedar Breather, which creates a ventilation space between the roof deck and the roofing. Developed for use under cedar shakes, we're going to use it under a standing seam metal roof. It'll provide an air channel so that any vapor that passes through will have an escape path. Even though vapor dry is rated for temperatures up to 250 degrees Fahrenheit, metal roofs can get pretty hot in the summertime, especially the dark ones. The air channel will also allow heat to escape, reducing the amount of work that the roof insulation and the AC equipment will have to do to keep people cool inside. Aside from installing that standing seam metal roofing from ABC, we're also going to finish covering the walls with some dry stack style manufactured stone from Stoneworks. It goes on with mortar like a three coat stucco system, but the mortar remains invisible like a dry stack. Like a dry stack that looks freaking awesome, especially with the other claddings and the roofing package. And that's going to wrap up season three of Building Resilience, the show about design and construction for extreme climate, healthy homes, and sustainability.